Hi guys, welcome to a Swift look, a Taylor Swift show. I'm Zoe Jewell, and today, in honor of Taylor Swift, the Eras Tour, Taylor's version, coming out on Disney+, Plus, I thought it would be the perfect time to rank my favorite eras from the Eras Tour, from least favorite to favorite. I know. It's controversial. It might ruffle some feathers, but... I think we I think we can do it and I think we can respect each other's opinions. <laughs> I want to say before we get into the ranking that I've seen the Eras tour so far just one time, saw her in Kansas City night 2. Yes, the night that Travis Kelsey was also there. So I feel especially connected to that relationship and um, the energy that was in the air that that night in Kansas City. I am planning to see her another time this year. Um, so I will get to rethink my thoughts on the ranking and maybe I'll have a change of heart when I see it a second time. But I but I have seen the Eras Tour one time and I hope you guys have as well. Or if you haven't seen it, you've at least watched the movie either in theaters or now that it's coming out to Disney Plus, you've watched it there. I think it's important to just say that just because an era is ranked low on the list or high on the list, I guess high being number 10, the quote unquote worst, doesn't mean I don't like the era. In fact, there are a number of eras that I didn't put super high on the list, but I love the album, but it just maybe didn't work as well for me in concert. So I want to just say that. And I also want to say that just because I didn't like it as much doesn't mean you can't like it or vice versa, right? We all have our own opinions. We're all, I mean, I the concert's A plus perfection from start to finish. But if we had to rank it, if I had to rank it, this is how I would, I would rank it. Okay, let's jump right in because we have a lot to, to discuss and we have so many eras to discuss. Coming in in last place, simply because it does not exist, is the debut era, Taylor Swift, her first album. Why did we not get a debut era. I still don't fully understand this logic and reasoning. I know a lot of people have said she didn't do a debut era because she doesn't still have the rights to that music yet. She doesn't own it yet. She has the rights. She doesn't own it as her album yet. But that doesn't fully make sense to me because when she started out the tour, she didn't own a lot of the albums. Like she still hadn't owned 1989 yet or Speak Now. She still doesn't have reputation. So I don't fully buy into that theory. And I just, I don't get why we don't even just have one song on the set list that is from debut. I thought that she would include our song. I, I thought like that's an easy way to just like, I don't know, really hammer home the idea of like this start of her career to where she is now. And I feel like our song being that the first song that really like took off for her in a real way. Obviously, I know Tim McGraw was her first lead single and that, that did very well. But I feel like our song, it was like that kind of took her up another level. And I feel like if she had performed that consistently over the course of the tour, it really would have painted the picture of like beginning to where we are now in her career. And I just think there's so many amazing songs on that album. Should have said no, picture to burn. I could go on and on and on. And I would have just loved to have gotten a little bit more of that. Well, I would have loved to have gotten any of that because she didn't even sing a debut song for one of her surprise songs on our show, for my show. Um, and I really missed it. I felt like we were not fully complete without the debut song. So obviously that has to come in last place because it doesn't exist. All right, moving on. Number nine is Evermore. I know this is controversial. So I'm going to tread very lightly, but Evermore for me is just not meant for a stadium. I love the music on Evermore. I think it's fantastic. It's a wonderful album, but it just didn't work for me. And I felt like it kind of threw off the energy of the concert. We were kind of writing this high and then it just felt like everything shifted. It didn't work for me personally. And I also, I'm sort of confused why she didn't include Gold Rush in the set list because I feel like of all the songs on that album, Gold Rush feels the most meant for a stadium out of everything on that album. So yeah, just didn't really work for me. I I, I wish she would have maybe made it a little bit shorter, maybe done had done some more like mashup styles to play the songs, but not play them quite as long. And I know there's people who love that 
part of the um, tour and, and, and that part of the show, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't my favorite. Um, so that unfortunately is why it is at number nine. Okay. Number eight, another controversial pick. And this actually pains me because this is one of my favorite Taylor albums, probably definitely top three for me, Taylor albums, but it's 1989. I know, I know, I know. Now this is a bit of a catch 22, no pun intended. Um, because I don't fault her for the choices she made with this era. She basically, she only plays the hits. She plays Blank Space, Shake It Off, Style, Wildest Dreams, all four fantastic songs. I wouldn't take any of those away necessarily, but I do feel like I would have loved to have had one sort of deep cut in that part of the show. I would have loved to have heard, not that Out of the Woods is a deep cut, but I would have loved to have heard Out of the Woods or New Romantics. Like how awesome would it have been if she had had incorporated New Romantics in some way, shape or form. Clean, I Clean probably wouldn't have fit with like the energy at that point in, in this show. But I just, as a diehard Swifty, as a person who's been a fan for forever, and especially of that album, I wish there would have been a little like nod to the people who like really know that album, not just like, oh yeah, hear the hits and you'll enjoy the hits. So that for me is why it is at number eight. And I know that's controversial because it's a fantastic album. I personally would have been okay if she had like done a little bit, like only like shortened the songs that she did sing in that section and added in another song personally. Okay. Number seven speak now. This is the perfect example. The reason it's at seven is because we don't get that much from the Speak Now era. I was fortunate enough, as I mentioned, I went to the Kansas City show. So you guys know that I got to hear Long Live live. That was the very first city that she played Long Live on the tour. So I feel very blessed and highly favored that I got that song because I love that song so much. It made me cry. It was like probably the only part of the show where I actually cried. Um, so because of Long Live, it is at seven. I also love Enchanted. It's a great song. But those are the only songs we get from Speak Now. And that album, again, is full of such great stuff. And I, I also, you know, I, I understand that she plays for over three hours. She cannot play every single song that we want her to play. But I think what where I'm coming from is I, I wanted her to maybe cut down on some other eras and then beef up some other eras too. And I feel like the Speak Now era is a place where I wish she would have maybe done, me like Mean would have been the perfect additional song for this era because that song is so good. And I feel like it kind of would have like rounded out the era just with um, Enchanted and Long Live. But I do have to give her credit because she picked two very quality songs. Love them both. I just wish it was a little bit longer, like one more song longer. Moving on to number six, Red. Okay. Red is my favorite Taylor album. So again, it pains me to put it at, at six because in all honesty, this should be at the very, I mean, this should be one of my absolute favorite eras. And it is, but only because of All Too Well, 10 Minute Version. If it wasn't for All Too Well, 10 Minute Version, honestly, this era may have been like at nine or eight. And again, it goes back to the 1989 thing, which is I wish that she would have played a deep cut, quote unquote, deep cut from the album, like a holy ground, like a state of grace, Something that it would have been like for the, I, and I hate saying true fans or the real fans of, of, of the album, but like just one song that wasn't one of the major, major hits. Um, and again, I get her playing on I, I Need Were Trouble and 22 and all that stuff. It makes sense. Those are the bangers from the album, but I would have loved just a little nod to something else on the album that maybe only people who really love the album and listen to the album would know and remember. Um, and I feel like, I feel like that's the theme for me consistently throughout the eras is like, I, I get her playing the hits, but I also would have loved just like one nod to just like an album track and kind of do both at the same time. Okay. Number five, smack dab in the middle. We have Lover. I've been on the record that Lover is my least favorite Taylor Swift album. And I know controversial, controversial opinion. And it's only because it has some of my favorite Taylor songs, but it also has a lot of my least favorite Taylor Swift songs. Now I have to give her credit for not performing me. Okay. She gets a lot of props for that because it's not a good song. And I'm glad that she didn't play that song. Obviously like the first full song she sings 
on the tour is Cruel Summer, a top tier, top caliber, A plus song. So for that reason, it, that, that honestly is why it's at number five, because screaming the bridge to Cruel Summer is a religious experience that everyone should get to experience at least once in their life. It healed me. It made me feel complete in my life. Honestly, um, that might be dramatic, but that was really truly how I felt. So because of that song alone, it bumped it up to five. And also I was so hyped. Like it's the first era of the show. So you're just like overwhelmed with excitement and all this stuff. But again, and I, and I don't know how she would have done it because I understand that it would have thrown the vibes off of like the era. Cause the, that part of the show, it's like high energy. You know, she plays, she plays Cruel Summer. She does uh, The Man. She does you need to calm down. But I would have loved to have had one, either Death by a Thousand Cuts or Corn- Cornelia Street. Now I know it wouldn't have necessarily worked super well, again, with the vibes and the energy, but I love those two songs so much. And I feel like the fans love those songs so much, both of those songs so much. And I I personally would have been more than okay if she had cut either The Man or you need to calm down or honestly, even the Archer, even though I like the Archer in the show in place of Cornelia Street, Death by a Thousand Cuts. That's just me. And I'm sad I didn't, I, I didn't get to hear those songs live, but still obviously fantastic por- part of the show. And as I said, Cruel Summer changed my life. Okay. Number four is Folklore. Now you might be saying you're a hypocrite because you put Evermore at nine, but folk- Folklore at four, like, you know, how does that make sense? I feel like Folklore is just a better suited album for a stadium. It's not perfect for a stadium, but it is better. And I feel like for me, honestly, the reason it's at four is because of um, My Tears Ricochet. Excellent part of the show. Also, I love the August Betty moment. I think those songs work really well. I would still, my my note would have been to, to have made this section shorter. Like, I don't know that we needed um, the last great... American Dynasty. There's parts of the of the of this section that I probably would have cut and I would have condensed, but I still think it works really really well and I'm really happy that we got to hear those songs live. If I was the tour director or planning the tour, I probably would have combined the folklore evermore section as one section and would have done more like mashup style songs, shorter sections of songs and kind of made it like one complete section because again I felt like with Evermore and with Folklore it did kind of like break up the energy of the show it felt like you're kind of like riding this high and then then you come down and then you have to come back up again which makes sense that happens in a tour but I think it would have been better if it only happened once um just my opinion but I still loved it and again I still loved hearing those songs live so 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 good okay Now we're into the top three. These are the eras where I feel like I transcended into another realm, honestly. Number three, Fearless. Sensational. Sensational. She only plays three songs, but they're three of the best songs. They're the the three songs. If someone said to me, you can only get three songs from the Fearless era, these are the three songs I'd pick. Fearless, You Belong With Me, Love Story. The vibes were immaculate. The energy was palpable. Those three songs are feel-good songs you want to scream, you want to yell. They're just high energy, good vibe music. And I loved it. I thought it was perfect. And like I said, I mean, I love this album so much. It's one of my all-time favorites, Um, but I thought it was perfect. I I, I honestly wish that this this section was longer. Like I could have done with another song off the album, but I feel like for the song she picked, A plus wouldn't have changed a thing. Number two is Midnight's. I mean, to end the show with Karma, Bejeweled, you've got Lavender Haze, so many great songs in this era. Again, songs that are meant to be performed in a big crowd with lots of people yelling, singing. It just, it fits, it fits, it works. Um, And I think like the energy was right. And also it's last era that she performed. So again, it like, it just feels right. Um, And I loved it. Like, I I don't think I would have changed anything from the era. I don't think I would have taken out any songs or put any songs in. Of course, I would have loved to have heard You're On Your Own Kid, like as its own song in the set list permanently. But again, it wouldn't have fit with the energy that she was going for at that part of the show. So I'm okay with not having it. I think it's great. And again, I think the karma moment like solidifies it as a really strong 
great era with good vibes. Number one era of the Taylor Swift tour, of the Eras tour, is Reputation. This album was made for a stadium, point blank. I mean, it's just the perfect stadium album. You cannot tell me otherwise. I've heard from so many people who have gone to the Eras tour who were not Reputation fans necessarily, who left being like, that was the best part of the show. Those songs are just meant to be played full blast, at a stadium, people screaming, yelling. It's perfect. The are you ready for it? The don't blame me into the look what you made me do. That that trans that that like almost mashup style. So good. Every single part of it is just excellent. I hope she plays Reputation on every single tour for the rest of her life because it is just meant to be enjoyed and experienced with a crowd of people. Whereas I feel like Evermore folklore. Those are albums where it's like you're lounging outside on a patio with your friends, just like hanging out, being casual. That's what that album, those albums are kind of meant for. Reputation, it's meant for being in a stadium of 80,000 people screaming your head off. It's just, it's the best era. I love it. And I could, I, I would, if I could only experience one era from this tour, Reputation era, 100%. All right, guys. That is my ranking of the eras from the eras tour. I would love to know your guys' thoughts on my ranking. What is your favorite era? Your least favorite era? Did you disagree? Agree? What song could you have added? Because let's be honest, she could have played for six hours and I would have loved it. And I mean, she has so much, so many songs that she could sing and we would all love it. Um, But yeah, please share all your thoughts, feelings, concerns. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more wonderful, fun Taylor Swift content. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.